So Chris, yes. we're chatting this week about first fruits, yes. and uh, we were talking a little bit about it beforehand. Um, I was sharing that it's another devo devotion that is a little uh, shorter on the verses for each day, and I kind of like yeah. a little bit of the longer segments, and that uh, the devotion was just a little, maybe a little, a little challenging for me, and you said that you had some thoughts on that. Well, so I just wanted to talk about that a little bit, because I, for one, I kind of sympathize with where you're at, which is, um, <coughs> excuse me, which is to say... The devotions, they don't seem exceedingly long, by the way, the devotions right. themselves. But they are often longer than even the scripture passage. Um, and this is no comparison except to say that it's the only thing I can think of that's similar. You don't want to tell a joke that takes longer to explain or set up than, than the humor. Mm -hmm. right? And I think that's one of the traps sometimes of a devotional is you I don't think you really want to expound more than what the scripture is giving you mm -hmm. um, now I'm not That's saying the devotionals are I'm not saying the writings are, are not good or any of sure. that I, I'm actually enjoying this and that's I was saying that to you earlier right um, and I'm enjoying going through Genesis again kind of slowly right um because the cosmicness of God is something I can dwell on. And so that's part of this. Yeah. It's part of it, right? Yeah. Um, the whole creator a angle is just appealing to me. Um, but that being said, I get it when you have like a couple paragraphs of devotion and then, you know, three verses. Yeah. That's hard sometimes. I think what's especially difficult for me uh, at times, and we'll get into what's phenomenal uh, and, and, and oh, sure. how God is kind of working, but is that uh, I compare it to some degree to, you know, some of the shows that get made based on the Bible and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and some devotionals, right? Not all, but there are times where there's a verse that you hear and then you hear, you know, some, some uh, pastor preach about it mm -hmm. for 20 minutes, right? And how mm -hmm. many words? It's so much longer, but it's all using the bible and it's all using history to kind of explain what that verse meant right things yeah. that the writer knew but you don't know and so sure. that the devotional could be could be really long and the verse could be short but i would compare it kind of to the tv show in that what it seems like is, is happening a, a decent amount of time is that um gaps are being filled in that we don't know and it's like, uh, and things are being implied that the verse isn't actually saying, and the context of the verse isn't actually saying. And so it might yeah. be true. Mm -hmm. It might be true that that's what happened. But when I'm reading, I want to I want to sit and I want to dwell on what I know is true, so mm -hmm. my foundation gets built up strongly. Um, and then kind of fill in the gaps as I need to. I don't want my foundation to be somebody filling in the gaps. Does that make sense? Okay. I think so. Um, and I think it's, th this is hard to do. Uh, it's hard to do in, in a format that we're in now. Yeah. Yeah. And not me and you, but I mean like the format where you. you're reading somebody that might be a pastor who's profoundly good at teaching, but we're only reading what he's written and you're not sitting there right. able to ask a question. Right. You're not able to interact. You're not able to um, to to inquire about dots that might be connected. Correct. Right. You're not able to do that, and I I respect that because uh, inquiring minds want to know. Yep. Right. And I want to see where the Bible bears itself out. Yeah. I do want to see that. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to just trust, always. Right. Um, so. I don't want to spiral into good, this good, has thanks. to do with, you know, the credibility of the writer. Right. <laughs> but I mean, there is some of that too, but I don't want to spiral into that. Right. I would expect that these people are vetted pretty strongly. Right. That's um, a good point. But that said, I do want to kind of dive into a couple of the ways. Actually, there's one specific Go way ahead. and it was really shocking to me. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm holier than anybody. Mm -hmm. I think I want to know God and I want to know the word and I want to obey and I'm challenged to obey some things mm -hmm. because they cut across what 
maybe my personal desires sometimes. Mm. But I want to align my desire with God's desire, right? Yep. So I'm, I'm gathering the, the wheat and I'm throwing out the sheaves, you know, or yeah. throwing, throwing out the chaff. That's what I mean. You bring in the sheaf. <laughs> <laughs> I just went nodded. I was yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew well, what I'm you meant. I'm throwing out the bad stuff and I'm trying to gather in the good stuff and trying to align yeah. myself. Right. Um, so I say that to say a couple of days ago was the, was the commentary about time. Uh-huh. And how time isn't the boss of you. Yeah. And I recognize, especially in the Western world, time is, we allow time to be bossy. We allow time, <clears throat> a, a huge amount of control over us. Right. We just, we do. You know, we allow our schedules to dictate this and we allow, you know, when we're going to eat, when we're going to yeah. study, when we're going to pray, when we're going to whatever. Hmm. Um, are all dictated often by time. Now, I say that as a person who relishes a schedule, Mm -hmm. but also the freedom to manipulate that schedule the way that I need to. Right. Um, And and I felt like, oh, I'm okay either way, and time isn't the boss of me. Right. Until I started to realize, as soon as I read that and I'm like yeah but I'm not beholden to time wait a minute right and the truth is I'm constantly obsessing about time I may do it differently I may not be like the well at 915 I do this and then yeah. at 930 I do this and I may not be that guy but I'm like think of it this way I'm a drummer and rhythm is like one of the most important aspects of music to me. Yeah. Now it's it's no more an important element than melody or whatever. Right. But rhythm is an obsession of mine. Right. And as a drummer keeping time, which rhythm is a, is a <laughs> musical measure <laughs> yeah, of time. Yeah, exactly. Right? right. So if rhythm is a musical measure of time, that is critically important to me. Right. And and I think I'm the boss of it. Oh, that's interesting. Right? Like, I, I boss the rhythm. I boss the time of any musical event. And that's kind of true mm-hmm. in the sense that I, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'll, I'll be that guy in your band, right? Yeah. When someone says, well, I just want to play this or that. And I'm like, yeah, but it's got to feel this way. Yeah. And it's got to be able to rhythmically in this area this way. yeah and so anyway that plus the willy-nilly way that i deal with schedule type time yeah. all the time dwell outside of time is my <laughs> is the thing i like to say like well god dwells outside of time which he does right but he also created he's the master of time right i fritter away all kinds of time yeah and it becomes the boss of me in that respect. So as I thought through that whole thing, which, by the way, the scripture didn't even highlight. I know. In <laughs> that one, I was, I was like, <laughs> okay, was... so you really just wanted to talk about time. <laughs> right, right. That was That's exactly right? my point, right? Yeah. In, in that one, I totally hear you. Yeah. Um, but he got me thinking. Yeah. And the well, prayer that he put in there, and I was yeah. like, oh, my goodness. I am letting time push me into all kinds of shapes or out of all right. kinds of shapes when I believed I don't have a problem with time. Right. Well, that's stupid. Right. So yeah, that hit me. That was one of the ones that hit me. Yeah, that was. And I think there's, I mean, there's value to those, those devotionals, you know, that do that because as long as they're true, right. As long as they're true based on other scripture passages. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, uh, but, but you're like in that, the verse for that day was, you know, and God, you know, created that separation and let the, and let the moon r- r- rule over the night and let the sun rule over the day. Right. Let, let one light rule over this and one mm-hmm. light, right, light rule over that, yep. which doesn't really go the direction that, that he took it. Right. doesn't I, mean that what he said isn't true. I could tot- like, I could see him getting that. Right. But it definitely felt like I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about this, so I can talk about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I still, like I said, man, I still, I still value it. You know, even as you as you yeah. talk about that and as you talk about time, I think there's 
Well, I guess to to bring it back to to you know this this gener this Genesis passage and the kind of context that we're in, God is creating the universe, right? Yeah, totally. He He is creating everything, and clearly also therefore the ruler of it. He is right. He is the sovereign authority. He right. is the right. He is the master here. Yep. And then I look at like an example like you're, what you're talking about with time, where we start to think time belongs to us. And we can use that time however we want it, right? right? Well, we are blessed to be able to do that. And as we mature, and this is what I'm learning even through, well, through this whole running through again, as, as we mature, we come to understand that t- time needs to be well spent somehow. Right. It's like the only commodity you cannot... It- get back yes and that's why i'm that's why i'm kind of uh uh, attaching to this to this Mm -hmm. day that you're talking about because i look at you know the the way that i use time and the way that i traditionally use time Mm -hmm. and uh, i'm very much a in the moment kind of guy right and Mm -hmm. enjoy what you're in in the moment don't if you're having a great conversation with somebody don't don't say well i gotta do this other thing so see you later right it is good to be present right where you are yeah it's true but and I remember this uh, from a college, a college class that I took where a, a professor um, was talking about laziness and uh, in some way. And, mm. and he said something, you know, you know, so the sin of laziness, yada, yada, yada. Uh, or he said, like, you know, being lazy is a sin. And I just in front of the class was just yelled, like, what? <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, what are you talking about? Laziness isn't a sin. And, uh, and he, he went on, and, and to him it was very obvious, right? It was, in fact, one of the seven deadly sins. Um, but, but, <laughs> Which, um, that's not biblical, but I understand. Correct. And that, that wasn't his. But his point was like, well, it should be pretty obvious to you that laziness is a sin. And my viewpoint was just kind of, you know, enjoy every moment. You know, if you need to rest and chill and sleep and whatever, and you want to do that, go ahead. But I think, which is, I still think true, but there is a, there is a level of being aware of it. So, so this is my thing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, the amount of days that I've spent, day offs or whatever, that I've spent just kind of saying, okay, this is my day. I'll do whatever I want Mm -hmm. and not really thought about it, not thought about, okay, do I need rest right now? Then I'll rest. Do Mm -hmm. I need, um, you know, something? Do do I need to take my mind off something? Or, Or if this is still God's time, what should I do with it, right? Right. And that's, I think, where I really go with this is I start saying, if this is his what should I do with it? Because maybe the answer is still rest and sleep or eat or, or, you know, go and have some fun. Or maybe it's not. But I have to say, too, that it's all of those things are scriptural and God ordained. They're all they're all parts of it. But are they in? Am, am I reflecting on it so much so that that I'm confident this is what God's wanting? And e- that, am I even doing that? That's that's really smart. Um to ask what you're to be doing in a moment is totally smart. Um, because it's obvious that God wants us to eat. It's obvious right. that God sometimes wants us to fast. It's obvious that God wants us to work. And it's also obvious that it's biblical to rest. So and we take these things as contrasts with each other. And the truth is, they're just kind of seasonal facts. But do you, and this is maybe my my thought, and this is, and then, uh, you know, this will be my last thought, and then feel yeah, free to we'll wrap this, because we're trying. Yep. But I remember, I've said this before, but I remember hearing a, a Bible study led by Pastor Bierman where he asked the question, or he pointed out the prudence in, in Timothy, and he talked about, as a, as a man, this was directed towards a men's group, mm-hmm. um, but really as a person, as a man, though, uh, what are you doing everything intentionally? Because God's calling you to do everything intentionally, mm-hmm. right? Is he, though? I think so. I think in that passage, right? Do I mean, it, when, when he talks about like, testing things and that kind of stuff, like, mm-hmm. and let your yes be yes and your, your no be no, you know, uh, know why you're doing the things that you're doing, right? Don't, don't just throw things up in the air and hope that they work out a certain way, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that was really valuable to me to say, uh, am, I, am I doing what I'm doing because I'm, I'm confident that based on the information that I have in my prayer time and my Bible time, it's the best thing? 
or am I just too lazy to try and figure something out so I'm just doing something and hoping it works? And that was a really kind of valuable thing, especially the prayer time. Am I praying over it? Um, but that was a valuable thing for me to reflect on. So as I think about how I use my time and that stuff, that's what I'm thinking. Final thought? Yeah, I think um, I think we could spiral a little bit into other conversations, but I, I don't know that that would be... So easily. Well, yeah, and I don't know that that would be entirely fruitful at the moment. Yeah. I think... Um, I think what's well, it's good to be exposed. Let's go back a little bit. It's good to be exposed to different kinds of uh, devotional writings yes. and thinkings, right. um, because then y- it helps you actually to be intentional with how you sift through your faith. Right. Right. Um, and I think that's important because you sort of affirmed your value in the word is the word. What you can say about it can help me, but the word is really the, the point. Right, right. And I would agree with that. Um, but I also would say, you know, I, I have valued at least topically what we've been going through here me the too. last few weeks. And so I want to make sure that I don't, <clears throat> I don't take the methodology and say, well, I didn't like that and have that color the entirety of the yes. situation when – when I really have appreciated walking through Genesis this way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, okay, the methodology might not be the one I would pick or do for myself, but but I'm grateful to have these things about God highlighted in this way. That's a beautiful point. That, and you're completely right about that. I, God uses these things in he does. different ways. And does. just because something might not be exactly the way I want it doesn't mean it's not yeah. good, and it right. doesn't mean he's not going to use it for sure. So. Right. Exactly. All right, well, there we go. A conversation on first fruits.